Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the DHCP service that's built into OS X Server. Now, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Profile. And basically what DHCP does is it assigns IP addresses to the various devices that you have on your home network. And so that's how your devices actually get connected to your network for things like file sharing or internet sharing uh, or any of those other types of things that you do on your network. Each of your devices has to have an address that's uh, assigned to the network so the network knows it's there and can uh, send the information back and forth. So it's a, it's a very uh, important service. Now for most of us, those of us that are home users, that uh, service happens through your router. Uh, where your router handles all of the addressing uh, for your devices and assigns those things to you. Uh, but here in OS X Server, we do have the option to actually run the DHCP through your server instead of through your router. Now, there's some advantages and disadvantages to doing this. Uh, first of all, if you're a home user, uh, you're probably just better off having the router do the assigning for you uh, because the odds that maybe your server would be offline at some time uh, are a little higher. And so if the DHCP was only going through your server, uh, when your server's down, then all of that addressing gets lost and people can't get on the Internet and all those kinds of things start to happen. So it's usually a lot easier in that case to use the router. Uh, those that might be in offices uh, where maybe you've got uh, you know, multiple servers running or you've got people that are hitting the server and you'd like to control it from a more centralized location through the server interface, uh, then the server app is, is better for you. Uh, and it would allow you easier access without having to do other kinds of logins to the server application remotely where you could fix uh, the DHCP issues and manage them that way. So there's advantages and disadvantages to running the service, but like I've done in all of the screencasts, I want to show you how this, uh, how this service works. Now, a unique thing for those of you that are especially using uh, an airport extreme base station, if you're using an Apple router, right, it shows up in the side and you're, you're managing your ports and everything through that, uh, there, is, uh, there is a little bit of a workaround that we need to do to get this to work together. So if I just, let me go into airport utility here for a minute. If you go into airport utility and you go to the network tab, you'll notice that we have a few things on the router mode. Now, right now, you can see my router is providing DHCP service. And if I'm going to run it on my server, I can't have that happen. But if I go here to select, I've only got a couple of options here. I can do uh, off, which is in bridge mode, which means that basically none of the port forwarding uh, features are working. I can do a DHCP only, which again means that my router would be assigning addresses, but again, uh, I wouldn't be doing port forwarding there. Or I've got DHCP and NAT, which is where I'm assigning addresses with DHCP, and NAT is our port for forwarding protocol, which allows me to open and close ports. So obviously there's no way I can use any of these things uh, to shut off DHCP and have it work uh, and have it work still as a uh, port forwarder where I've got the ports open and closed. So I've got to do something uh, for that to do a workaround to make that work. And so I want to show you how to do that. Now, one of the things that we would want to do with this is because we can't turn off DHCP, what we need to do is we need to uh, limit the number of address ranges that are assigned here. So if you just come down here and go into the network options, and on here, what you're going to do is we're going to give it two addresses, right? We're just going to give it uh, the 10.0 point, um, point one point, and then we would go two here. So let's say two, and then we would go to three. So we go, let's see, right here we would go two, look like this, and then we would go to three right here. And we want to make sure that this enabled NAT port, for, uh, port mapping protocol is open so we can open and close ports, and you want to leave that blank. And so what I would do then is I would, I would save that, and what that would do is that would limit my router's uh, DHCP range to just two addresses. Okay, So I want to make sure I do that. Now, because uh, I've got my uh, router assigning addresses, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to say cancel, but just assume that we've done that. So now this range here would just say 0 0.3 to point, uh, 0.2 to point 0.3. And it wouldn't have this wide range that's in here uh, to make that work. Then what you'd want to do is set a DHCP reservation for your server, just like I've got right here. In fact, if I just uh, click on uh, edit for a second, you can see it drop down. And so you're going to put your server name in there. You're going to put in your MAC address and then that IP address for your server. And in our case, we've assigned uh, 0.3. 
Let me just close that off. And so you've got that all set and ready to go there so that your server is, is, uh, has its own reservation for it. Then what you're going to do is set up another reservation for the other one. So if you used point three for your server, then for point two, you're just going to set a bogus uh, address. So you just kind of come in here, you're going to add a description, and you can just say, you know, hold or reservation or whatever. Put in a, a bogus uh, MAC address there, whatever you want to put in there. Uh, and then just uh, save port 2 or port 3, whichever one you did not use for your server. And so that just allows us to have that range because server require uh, airport utility requires us to have a range, but that way we're reserving that so that it can't be used. Okay, so once you've done that, then what you've effectively done is just told the uh, router, hey, look, you're only assigning two addresses. Once you've assigned those two and they're full, which we've already done with these uh, reservations, then you need to pass it on to the server uh, to do the DHCP assignment so that it will actually uh, make that happen and assign it. Now, one thing you can do is you, is you can come into the um, uh, system preferences here. You want to go into the network uh, tab there, and just on your Ethernet, you can check to make sure that the address is assigned to your server right here, just to make sure that that's correct. And, uh, you know, down here you can see your diff your DNS servers and all of that. So, again, you just want to make sure that that, uh, that that gets assigned. If you're looking for the MAC address uh, for your server because you don't know where to put that in, if you just click on Advanced here and then go to Hardware, uh, the MAC address will be right in this area right here. And that's the one that you'll copy and paste uh, onto your uh, into your server. So let's just go ahead and cancel that and come back. And let me just uh, put this down here. And I'm going to do the same thing here with the router. So that's kind of the workaround for using an Airport Extreme base station uh, if you want to use DHCP with your server uh, at the same time. Okay, that's how that works. So now let's take a look at the service here. Here we are in the uh, actual DHCP service. You see that we've got a network right here that's already set up uh, with my network range here. Uh, I can edit that just by clicking on the pencil here. And so it takes me into this screen. Uh, what I can do is name it whatever I want. It just defaulted to 10.0.1 Ethernet. I can change that to whatever I want. Call it my uh, office network, or if you've got multiple machines that are running DHCP, you can label it by location, however you want to do that. Then I've got my lease duration on how long I want people to hold on to an IP address, and I can say an hour, a day, seven days, that sort of thing, uh, if I want to limit that. Uh, I can also do the network interface. I can do either Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Uh, again, I recommend that you run your server on Ethernet just for the throughput uh, and because it's more reliable than Wi-Fi, but you can do it on Wi-Fi if you want to. Then you have your starting IP address here and your ending one. And so in this case, you would start it beyond the two that we reserved for the Airport Extreme Base Station. So you'd start it at uh, point 0.4 here up to 253. Okay, that's how you would do that. Uh, and then you've got your subnet mask here and then your router's address, which we've got there, which is, you know, 10.0.1.1. Now down here, you've got your two name servers uh, for DNS, and so you can edit that. And this basically says where do you want people to look for their DHCP reservations? What, what are the name servers? And you can see here we've got uh, my server itself is the first one, and then this is just uh, open DNS, uh, which is for external lookups, so that when people are on the Internet, that's where they go, since uh, my... Um, server itself can't do those lookups, and you can add whatever addresses you want here. Uh, and then you can also provide search domains for connected clients. In fact, let me just um, let me pull up system preferences again here. Uh, let me just pull that up for a second. And so what you'll see here is you'll notice that this address should be here, right, looking to the server itself. And then see where the DNS servers are. This should match, right? So I've got the 10.0.1.3 uh, and then this other one. You see those two there. You'll notice this address here, this is just another address for the server itself. All right, this is home. And, and so it's saying look to yourself for DNS. Uh, it's basically the equivalent of this, uh, you know, 10.0.1.3 uh, um, assignment there, but uh, that's in there as well. And then search domains would be this particular one here. I could put that in there if I want to, or uh, leave that blank. It really doesn't matter. I just wanted to show you that these these should match on your server itself. All right, let's go ahead and put that back down. So I'm going to leave that alone. Just say cancel, and so that would be it. And then I could say OK and save any changes that I've got. Let me just cancel that. And so you could do that for multiple networks. If you're running more than one network in your business, then you could put all of your different networks in here. If you've got one server that's going to run DHCP uh, for all your networks, you can centralize it here. And again, that would be an advantage of using this on servers. You have one place where all your networks are centralized. You just add a plus to add another network on there. 
Now, one more thing that it allows you to do, if I come over here to clients, uh, I can add uh, clients in here and do my DHCP reservations in here. So just like I did on the router when I did a reservation for the server, I can do a reservation in here for every machine on my network if I want to, so that I know which IP address every machine has. And so in order to do that, I would just click the plus button here, and you would put in the name of your of your machine let's say let's call it test here and then you could choose your network if you had multiple networks again we only have one give it an IP address and then in here you would put a MAC address so what I'm gonna do is just I've got a made up MAC address right there that you would put in and then I would say create and what it's gonna do is that you can see here it creates this uh, this DHCP reservation here for our test machine it's a static IP and I gave it this IP address and it's on this network and so you would go through and just create that for each and every machine and if I highlight it you see now I get access to this where I can edit the client uh, if I want to uh, or I can delete the client or just add another one and so once I've got all of that set up then I would throw the switch turn on the service and then your server would then begin to hand out addresses on your network so that gives you an idea of how the DHCP service works. Again, uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to it. So depending on your situation, you can choose. Uh, in my particular situation with uh, a home server, I'm just using my router uh, to do all of the DHCP assignments, and I don't use the service at all. But that's just the way I use it. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.